We're happy that you're with us today. Uh, and we're excited about Jesus. You know, uh, you know, saying that you don't believe in Jesus would be as crazy as saying you don't believe in Abraham Lincoln. You know, I mean, we have historical proof, evidence that, uh, of Jesus that's well documented, by, even by scientists and archaeologists and historians. He, he was a philosopher, uh, the greatest that ever lived. That's undisputed. He was a, a teacher, even secular institution, institutions uh, study and teach his teachings today. He wa uh, was a prophet with fulfilled prophecies one after another, and even other religions recognize him as those things. Amen? And so uh, without a doubt, the most influential human that's ever been born on earth, and our calendar is even marked by his birth. Amen. B.C. before Christ and A.D., which actually means the year of our Lord. Your, your birthday is marked by his birthday. If you were born in 2001, there might be a few people in the, over in this section that are. I don't know about anybody over here. That means you were born 2001 years after Jesus. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? So, uh, you know, even atheists... Mark their birthday by Jesus' birthday. So uh, after Jesus went to the cross for you and me, and he died for you and me, he was a sacrifice for you and me, uh, this is what sets him apart from any other leader or religion. Matthew chapter 28, and starting in verse 1, they'll have the scriptures on the, on the screen also, uh, behind me. Now, after the Sabbath, the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb, and behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning, and his clothing as white as snow, and the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. That means they fell out under the power is what happened. But the angel answered and said to the women, do not be afraid for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here for he is risen as he said, come see the place where the Lord lay. Wow. So he was raised from the dead for you and me. That is what sets him apart. Now, uh, this scripture, which we're very familiar with in Ephesians chapter 1, and verse, uh, we'll just r read a couple verses, verse 19. It says, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, look at this, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places. So it says this power is toward us who believe. Thank God for his power. I mean power like an earthquake that can shake off every shackle and chain and open every prison door that's ever had you bound. Now, over in chapter 2, uh, verse 5, it says, even when we were dead in sin, talking about spiritually dead, uh, he made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. And he raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Wow. Now, it, it, over in Romans, it says the spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead. We just read in Ephesians, it says the power, the spirit, it's the same thing. The spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by the same spirit living within you. And when that happens, it shakes off every shackle and opens every door that's ever had you bound. So uh, in the Bible, the four gospels, everybody say the four gospels, they are the eyewitness accounts of Jesus, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. 
And then we have what's called the epistles, which is just an old uh, word for letter. Uh, it, Paul's letters are the advanced teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is what P.C. Nelson said. And he shows the necessity of the crucifixion and the resurrection. So the gospels tell the events that led to the cross. In Matthew, we just read uh, in the gospel, you see what man saw. In, in Ephesians that we just read, and the epistles, you see what God saw. In, in the gospels, you see, you could say you see the natural things that happen. In, the, in Paul's letters, in the epistles, you see the supernatural. Or the spiritual. In the Gospels, the Gospels are like a photograph, and the, the epistles are like an x-ray. Same picture, but different kind of picture. A, a, an x-ray is looking inside. The epistles are looking inside what happened in Christ. So gospel by definition is good news, literally glad tidings. And the first result from hearing the gospel, you get glad. Amen. When the, when the angels announced uh, uh, Jesus' birth, they said, we bring glad tidings of great joy for all people. So if what you're doing doesn't make you glad, it's not the gospel. A gospel actually comes from the word evangel. And this is in classic Greek. Evangel means a runner from the battlefield with good news, the battle's been won. Wow. Now, over in Galatians 3, which is a familiar scripture uh, to us also, Christ, verse 13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, curses is everyone who hangs on a tree, talking about the cross, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon us in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now, in A.J. Gordon's book, In Christ, he said, what Jesus did on the cross and in his resurrection are immortal in energy and limitless in application. Everybody say application. application. We also get the word from that, apply. And today, we've even shortened it further, and we all know what this means, app. App. That's where it comes from. God planned this, he goes on, A.J. Gordon, before the foundation of the world, and he didn't leave anything out. It was necessary to undo everything Satan did through Adam. You don't have any problem that the proper application of the blood can't fix. Wow. So Jesus uh, uh, shed his blood. He died on the cross. He rose again. And then over in Acts chapter 2, it says they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And it says the fire of God came down on them, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and joy to the point that everyone thought they were drunk. Wow. Wow. Mary, the mother of Jesus, was there filled with the Holy Ghost and speaking in other tongues. So if you're going to be a good Catholic, you ought to follow Mary right to the upper room, amen, and get filled with the Holy Ghost. So there were 120 of them, and the Holy Ghost dressed them up and clothed them with power, and Jesus said, don't go anywhere until you have that power. Amen. Don't you know the devil had a nervous breakdown on the day of Pentecost? Because he's having trouble with one Jesus. But on the day of Pentecost, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead moved into 120. And then 3,000 got filled with the Holy Ghost. And Peter stood up to preach, and he said, These are not drunk, as you suppose, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, that in the last day, saith God, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Wow. So uh, uh, this is going to hit Africa and Europe and Asia and Australia and South America and North America. We could use a fresh wave of the spirit right now in Temecula. 
Amen. So we need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. We need to stay full of the Holy Ghost. We need to overflow with the Holy Ghost and keep the fire burning. So this is no little thing. There are, there are 600 million now around, around the world, and it's taken over nations. Right now in Singapore, right now in Korea. North Korea doesn't just have a nuclear weapon. They've got in South Korea, uh, right on the other side of the border, a church with over a million spirit-filled believers in one church filled with the Holy Ghost, Young E. Cho's church. That's why... Kim Jong-un's hair's going crazy. He's got a, <laughs> millions of people just across the border praying in the spirit. So the Holy Ghost can change anything. The power of the Holy Ghost can change your whole situation. He can even change your personality. Well, you know, I'm just the way I am. I got it from my mom. Well, I don't doubt it. I was born this way. I don't doubt it. We're all born with all kinds of stuff. That's why Jesus said, you must be born again. Become a new creation in Christ Jesus. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So you are not locked into any bondage from your past. We are now born of God. We are a new creation in Christ. And now the Bible says we are the temple of the living God. God's walking in you. God is dwelling in you. And if you, if you haven't received him, if you haven't met Jesus, you're in the right place because we're here to introduce him to you. You may look like a natural person on the outside, but on the inside, you've got the same spirit that shook hell and raised Christ from the dead. And in Christ, you are more than a conqueror. This is one of my favorite scriptures, and all of these scriptures that I'm reading are familiar. Uh, these are really uh, text scriptures for us. Verse 17 in the Amplified of Romans 5, for if because of one man's trespass, talking about Adam, death reigned through that one, much more surely will those who receive God's overflowing grace, unmerited favor, and the free gift of righteousness reign as kings in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Woo, I love that. Reign as kings in this life. Amen. So everything that Satan did in Adam God reversed it in Christ. He took it all on the cross. He shed his blood. And anything uh, that may have happened to you, and let me say this, whether it was your fault or not, God did more than enough on the cross through the blood of Jesus. His blood is greater than anything that happened to you. And the blood can reach into the very fabric of your personality and change things and, and erase scars and re remove the stain of shame and sin and guilt and set you free from your past. So Jesus has already done it. The, the blood has already been applied in heaven. All we need to do is apply the blood today by faith. Amen. Because of the blood, you're not fighting for victory. You're fighting from victory. All you have to do is apply the blood. So apply comes from the, from the word application. And like I said, we've shortened it to app. Now, uh, how many of you have an iPhone? Uh, on your phone, you have apps. And so, uh, I don't know why really we call it a phone. That's the last thing we use it for. I always tell people before calling me, is this something that can be done in a text? I don't think you can even just get a phone anymore, can you? I mean, it's a little computer, but really it's more than that. It's a camera, it's a GPS, it's a compass, it's a phone book, it's a tracker. Unfortunately for some people, it's a video camera, it's a photo library, it's a library, a photo albums, teaching CDs, alarm clock, recorder, Shazam. What's that? A song's playing in a restaurant or something, you just push Shazam it, tell you who's singing and what song it is. 
It's a flashlight. I used that last night. It's a dictionary, calendar, and alerts. I've used that today already. Starbucks, they don't tell you where the closest one is, and you can order it before you get there. eBay, you can shop from the car. Waze, Siri, Siri's amazing. I mean, hey Siri, what does Siri mean? Siri is just the name they gave me when I got the job. It doesn't mean any one specific thing, oh. but I like it. I mean, hey Siri, tell me a joke. Never trust an atom. They make up everything. <laughs> hey Siri. I see a little silhouette of a man. Scaramouche, Scaramouche, will you do the Fandango? Thunderbolt and lightning, very, very frightening me. Galileo, 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 Galileo Figaro Magnifico. I'm just a poor assistant. Nobody loves Oh, Siri's gone woke. Siri's, she can't even, I, she can't even say the words. I'm just a poor boy. I'm just a poor assistant, she said. That's enough for now. And it's a touchy little thing, too, because you don't lock the screen, turn it off just right. You could be calling people. You don't even know it, and they're hearing swish, 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 swish as you're walking. So Sophia is 18 now. She's had an iPhone since she was six. Doesn't that seem young? Yeah, but I'm too old and too busy to not have mine. She kept taking mine because she's watching her little movies and playing her little games, you know? So don't judge me. That's just the world. That's the world we live in. So when you touch this app store, I mean the app store, that, that, that's the word we've been talking about, app. That's the best one because it opens up everything. You can, you can get on YouTube and hear a cat sing like a person. <laughs> Get on iTunes and listen to Isley Brothers. You know, oh, it makes me want to shout. All that. Another button, stocks. Don't push that if you have tr struggle with depression. <laughs> a GPS. It's always a woman's voice telling you what to do. You can, get, you can get on Facebook and see where everybody ate and who's working out and who's not, you know. You, all the music, you know, teaching CDs, Bible app, concordance, Photoshop, make you look like you had surgery. It's amazing. I use that one all the time. As long as, long as they never see you in person, you know, it's great. <laughs> Dodgers, play-by-play, -play, you know, get the schedule and the stats. As great, as great as all that is, some people say, Gavin used to say this all the time, I just want a phone. I was the same way. At first, it was kind of overwhelming, you know, when you're not used to it. My point uh, to all this is uh, a lot of people come to church and you tell them what all Jesus did on the cross and his blood that was shed and he purchased our redemption and he redeemed us from the curse, from all of it, from poverty, sickness, and death. And they say, all I want is to be forgiven and know that when I die, I go to heaven. Hey, that's included, but let me show you what all comes with it for free. Because Jesus did a lot more then take you to heaven when you die. When you push this, this uh, app right here, you get Galatians 3.13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, curses everyone that hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham, all of it, yeah. might come on us through Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith, redeemed from the whole curse. That means you don't have to be poor. You don't have to be sick. By his stripes you were healed. Oh, I like that one. By his stripes you were healed. I like to push that one. I found an application here. I'm going to apply the blood. There's only one way in, his blood alone. But you can apply that blood to everything in your life. It's all in there. It all comes with it. 
peace, joy, forgiveness, freedom, healing, health, prosperity, soundness, wholeness, favor, love, abundance. The blood of Jesus alone has done all of it. So to enjoy this blessing of redemption, uh, nothing is necessary except faith in the blood. His blood plus nothing minus nothing. His blood alone. And it makes you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Old things are passed away. All things have become new. And it gives you the same authority that God gave Jesus. The same righteousness. Listen to this scripture in Colossians chapter 2. In verse 9 it says, For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. Listen to verse 14 and 15 in the message translation. Oh, I love this. This is what Jesus did. The slate wiped clean. That old arrest warrant canceled and nailed to Christ's cross. He stripped all the spiritual tyrants in the universe of their sham authority at the cross and marched them naked through the streets. So we see, and you are complete in him. Uh, verse 9 says, for in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead, of the Godhead bodily. So there are over 130 what we call in him scriptures. Anytime you see in him in Christ or in whom, you should highlight those because they tell you who you are. And then you can apply them to your life. Acts 17, 28 says, in him we live and move and have our being. Romans 8, 1 says, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Uh, 2 Corinthians 2, 14, thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, it says, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I want to look at that one. In 2 Corinthians 5, 17, I want to read uh, these verses out of the Amplified. Listen to these verses. Therefore, if any person is engrafted in Christ, the Messiah, he is a new creation, a new creature altogether. The old has passed away. Behold, the fresh and new has come. But all things are from God, who through Jesus Christ reconciled us to himself. Listen to this. Received into favor, brought us into harmony with himself, and gave to us the ministry of reconciliation. That by word and deed, we might uh, aim to bring others into harmony with him. Wow. We all have been called to the ministry of reconciliation. Everybody can share with someone what he's done for you. It was God, verse 19, it was God personally present in Christ. There's one of those in Christ scriptures. Reconciling and restoring the world to favor with himself. Oh, I love this. Not counting up and holding against mankind their trespasses, but canceling them. And committing to us the message of reconciliation of the restoration of favor. So we are Christ's ambassadors. God making his appeal as it were through us. We as Christ's personal representatives. Beg you for his sake to lay hold. You got to. This is talking about applying it. Lay hold of the divine favor now offered you and be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made Christ to be sin who knew no sin, so that in and through him, we might become endued with, uh, viewed as being an examples of the righteousness of God. This, look at this, what we ought to be approved and accepted in right relationship with him by his goodness. Wow. Wow. Romans 6 says that if we died with him, uh, we also rose and lived with him. That's talking about now. 
not in heaven. Uh, now everything is changing. We are not just old sinners saved by grace. You're one or the, you're either an old sinner or you're saved by grace. You can't be both of them. But thank God we are saved by grace, put in right standing with God, reigning, reigning as kings in life through faith in his blood. I heard, this, I heard this guy tell this story. He used to transport uh, uh, chickens, and when they would transport them, they, would, uh, they tied, their feet, uh, tied their feet up together. And when they got to their destination, they'd come along and, and uh, uh, cut the strings off their legs, and the chickens would still lay there. They still, they, because they, they were tied up, and they're still thinking that they're tied up, even though they've already been set free. And he came along and he'd slap him a little and get him up because they didn't know that they had been cut loose. They had been set free. That's what I'm doing today. Because <laughs> some of you just thought you were rescued from hell. There's a lot more than that that's happened. It, it's more than a phone. Uh, uh, thank God it's a phone, but it's a phone book and a CD player and a concordance and your library and a camera and a GPS. There's a lot of applications to the blood. It's more than just forgiveness. It's prosperity and healing and soundness and joy and peace and favor and direction. Poke the chicken next to you and tell him you better get up moving around. Christ has redeemed you from the whole curse. His blood purchased your freedom. Don't, don't just keep laying there. Don't just stay down there. Get up and believe God. Apply the blood to your situation. Stir yourself up. He whom the Son has set free is free indeed. And the only thing, one thing you need to do is have faith in the blood. And that's where uh, the fight comes in right there. It's the fight of faith. So faith is based on, on two things. The knowledge, what you know Jesus has done for you. And then faith, faith must have application. You, in other words, you have to, you have to apply it. You, you have to move your mouth to do that. You got to say something. The Old Testament, they, they applied the blood with a hyssop branch. They would get a branch and dip it in the blood and they would apply it uh, with a hyssop. It's part of, uh, the hyssop is part of the mint family. In the New Testament, you, you, you apply the blood with the hyssop of your tongue. That's how you do it. That's why we sing songs about the blood. Down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where for cleansing from sin I cried, there to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. You apply the blood with your tongue. Now, over in last scripture, over in Romans 10 and verse 8, it says, but what does the word say? The word is near you. It's in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That's pretty close. Objects in mirror are closer than they appear. That's pretty close. <laughs> the things that you need in the word, they are not far from you. It's in your mouth and in your heart. That's pretty close. That if you confess with your mouth... That's how you apply the blood. The Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You apply the blood with your tongue. And everything that Jesus did, it's a lot more than just a phone. There's all kinds of stuff. It, it, it's more than just going to heaven when this is over with. Thank God for that, 
But it, if that's all you get, you fall way short of what he paid for. He redeemed you with the same blood at the same time when he hung on that cross from poverty, from sickness, death, and he intended you to walk in divine healing and divine prosperity and supernatural peace and restoration for your family and prospering in every everything that you set your hand to, every single area of your life. All you have to do is apply the blood. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus, I pray. If there's anyone in here that doesn't know you as their Lord and Savior, they wouldn't walk out these doors without making a decision for you, and I ask you for that in Jesus' name. Just for a moment, while, while every head's bowed and every eye closed, just in reverence to God is the only reason. If you're in here and you've never met Jesus, you've never been born again, you've never been saved, you've never received the Lord, those are all terms that we get from the Bible, but that you may not be familiar with any of them. But this is what they all mean. If you cannot lay down to sleep at night and know beyond a shadow of a doubt, if you were to die in your sleep tonight that you'd go to heaven, you can know. This is not a hope-so salvation. This is a no-so salvation. I heard a celebrity being interviewed, and uh, they said, w what do you think about heaven? And uh, the celebrity said, I hope I've done enough good things to make heaven. My friend, you can't do anything good enough to make heaven. Jesus hung on a cross and bled and died. And he took all the punishment for all your sin. He took your place. And then, thank God, he rose again, triumphant over death, hell, and the grave. And we are today together risen with him and walking in supernatural life. But if you don't have that revelation, if you don't know that, you can know before you walk out these doors. Second invitation is this. Maybe you, you have served the Lord, but you've kind of just been doing your own thing. I mean, what a better thing than on Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, to rededicate your life to the Lord and make a new commitment to Him. And then third, we talked about being filled with the Holy Spirit. It's the most powerful thing that will happen to you in this life. And let me just say that we have prayers that will be down here at the altar after the service. And if you ever need prayer for anything, you could come down here. But if this is, if, if this is you, on any of those three invitations, we're all going to pray a prayer together here in just a moment. But now this is just for me, so I can see you, so I can pray for you. You say, I don't know for sure. If I die tonight, I'd go to heaven. I want to rededicate my life to the Lord today. Just slip your hand up real quick for me so I can pray for you. I see that. Thank you. I see that. Thank you. I see that. Thank you. I see that one. Thank you. I see that. Thank you. You can put them down. Anyone else before we all pray together? I see that. Thank you. Anyone else before we all pray together? I see that. Thank you. Anybody else? There might be some also that are joining us online. Anyone else before we do that? All right, let's all do this. You, you joining online, do this with us. R lift one hand up toward heaven. It's just a sign of surrender. And I'm going to pray a prayer, and you just repeat it after me. Just mean it with your heart. Let's say this together. Father God, I come to you in Jesus' name. I believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. And I receive him as my Lord and Savior. I'll follow him all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, come on and give him thanks that heaven's your home.